everybody. Welcome to DNH TV. I'm Chris Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, uh, we're here to talk about something that uh, I look forward to talking about every single year. Uh, we're going to be talking about all of Lenovo's new devices uh, and the 12th gen Intel processors inside of them. Uh, and I've got two great guests to help me do that today. Uh, first, I have Dexter Howard. He is the North America product manager for Lenovo. Dexter, how's it going? Things are wonderful. Thank you for having me. <laughs> awesome. And of course, we have your friend of mine, Barry, uh, from uh, Intel. He's the client specialist. Barry, it's good to see you again. Uh, it's good to see you too. Thanks for having me as well. Awesome. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, uh, we will be taking questions throughout the uh, course of this presentation. If you have any questions at all, uh, please go ahead and um, ask them in the window that I've highlighted for you guys. Uh, we also do have resources that are available that um, that are the slide decks that are being presented and other uh, infographs that you might want to take a look at. Those are available in this window that I'm highlighting right now. So go ahead and take a look at the resources throughout the broadcast or after the broadcast if you need something to, uh, to kind of refresh or just have information to walk away with at the end of the broadcast. Uh, but without further ado, we have a ton of stuff to cover today. And we're going to kick things off with Dexter to learn a little bit more about Lenovo's uh, device lineup for this year. Dexter? Thank you very much, Chris. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to this. So uh, once again, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the audience. And uh, as we go through this and start talking about the uh, the hardware that Lenovo has, um, you know, I'll, I'll bore you guys here in the very beginning and then kick it over to, to, to Barry to, uh, to liven things back up. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to start out with and a lot of you guys know this, right? Um, over the last couple of years, you know, we have had to evolve. Uh, that is because also, you know, the workplace has, has evolved. As you guys know, we were once in the office, you know, pretty much everyone, uh, pandemic hit, and then we were forced to, to go, uh, you know, work from home or, or work from a remote location. And now customers and now clients are really starting to look at doing, you know, more of a hybrid mode or some are just saying, yes, we want everyone back into the office. But, you know, it's, it's just been real interesting um, just to look at the numbers and to look at the uh, percentages of, of, of that's out there. Right. One of three of workers don't feel like they have the right tools for the job. So that's either if you're working at home, or working in the office. You know, what are you what do you have? What does your what kind of system do you have? You know, what kind of accessories do you have uh, to be able to, to do your job effectively? You know, uh, other words, 74 percent of 18 to 34 year olds feel dissatisfied at, with their employer's tech uh, tech. So that means that the IT buyers, what are they bringing in? Are the IT buyers in tune with what employees need to make sure that they are productive? 91% uh, of people say technology influences their job choices. So if, uh, if a company is bringing on that technology or has contract with, uh, you know, certain vendors, um, can I work with that vendor? Can I work with that hardware? Um, is, is, do some employers also allow me to bring my own device? You know, a lot of these things are just being juggled around and, and talked about um, in, in the workplace. So one of the things that we want to do is just really make sure that we let you guys know that from a Lenovo perspective, we are just really considering all these things as we are putting together our hardware, uh, putting together a portfolio. And I'm just happy that I'm able to, uh, to share this information with you guys. Now, one of the things that we say from a notebook standpoint, and, and really one of the things I focus in on is notebook for Lenovo, is our ThinkPad and our ThinkBook product line. We think that for all the, uh, for a lot of the issues, most of the issues or most of the, the opportunities out there from our customers, we think that our ThinkPad and also ThinkBook really solves the problem, right? Uh, one of the things, you know, users want to be mo want to be mobile. They want to be flexible. They want to make sure that they have a business ready, you know, technology in their laptop uh, that that can do the job, right? They want to make sure that the notebook that they are carrying around is stylish and is light, um, you know, is powerful to handle all that productivity that they're going to throw at it, but also looks good, makes them feel good, not only from a pure visual perspective, but also from a tactile, from touching it. 
So making sure that the materials in there or what we're putting into our think pads uh, and, and think book are good. Um, they want to be flexible. So if they are using a standard clamshell or maybe a yoga type model or maybe a detachable, you know, uh, what kind of form factors do, does the customer have? So uh, that's important. Performance is important. So what not only what we put inside, because you do have some of those users out there that are pure geeks, right? they may want to be concerned about processor and memory and SSDs. But some folks just want to say, hey, I just want a system to, that I can get my job done on. I don't want any lagging. I don't want any, you know, problems getting logged in. I want a good battery life. You know, I want real simple things just to make sure that, uh, that I'm able to do my job. And then of course, durability, whatever that job may be, whether you are on an oil rig, whether you're in a manufacturing plant uh, or, or, or just going into the office or at home, right? Uh, wherever you are working, you know, having a durable system is important because from an IT perspective, from a company's perspective, they wanna make sure they get their return on investment, right? So, so they would rather have a system that they know and is reliable, has been tested, uh, and something that can be out in the field being used versus in the IT shop being fixed. So uh, we think that, you know, between our ThinkPad and ThinkBook product lineup, that we fit those needs um, and have something for, for users to choose from. So let me go through a couple slides of what we have this year. And I do apologize, my fault. You should see right now this uh, X1 Carbon open up and spin around and be able to show you all the good things about it. Uh, the animation is not working, but just kind of imagine in your mind this X1 Carbon Gen 10, which is a perfect business notebook because it's lightweight. It has Intel both U15 and P28 processors. Uh, that's really going to help out just depending on what your uh, what your what you're going to be working on, what the user is going to be working on. Um, up to 32 gig of memory. Um, definitely some panel options on there. So if you want touch, if you like OLED, that is there. And then also connectivity. I'll probably mention this on a few slides, but you know, one of the things that we've seen is very important for users is just how to get connected. You don't want to just be uh, either tethered down uh, on, a, on a RJ45 cable, right? You want to make sure that you have a good strong Wi-Fi connection, or if you're on the go, that you have 4G or 5G capability. So we do have that type of connectivity in the X1 Carbon. And then also, you know, a good host of Dolby Suite, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Voice, those things are good. Then also on the next slide is the X1 Yoga. So we have the Carbon, which is the clamshell, the Yoga, X1 Yoga, which is the, you know, form factor that can open up and fold over into a tablet mode. Um, a lot of the same uh, features that the X1 Carbon has, uh, but this one just from a yoga standpoint is, uh, is a good form factor that can be used and very versatile in a lot of situations. The X1 Nano, uh, we've had the X1 Nano around for, for a while. Uh, the thinnest and lightest ThinkPad that we have coming in at 14 millimeters thin we have an awesome communications bar on there. What that means is right on the very top of the display, you'll see just like a little bump, right? In that bump is where we have the technology for an improved camera, improved microphone. We just needed that little bit of, of bump uh, in the communications bar just to be able to house that technology in there, but still keep a sort of thin design. But this one having a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and the 85, uh, screen to body ratio really gives a lot of real estate on a nice, slim, and lightweight ThinkPad um, uh, in, in, in the market. A couple of the other ones that we have, T14S. So you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with the T14S. One of the things that we did this year was we increased it to have a, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, increased the screen to body ratio on this one, uh, we have two different finishes on this. So you'll see in the market, we have the traditional black and also the uh, silver model. So once again, going back to my uh, earlier comment, as far as looks, as far as feel, we have a couple different models that users can choose from um, in this one. 
we call this one the professional traveler because it is a very, very popular system um, and one that could be used as a workhorse model for a traveler or for somebody that is in the office. So, you know, having, um, you know, this product right here, I think is a good one in the Gen 3. Hey, Dexter. Hey, hey. could I? Hey, so, sorry. I just want to comment just for one second, just in case there's some confusion. So on some of the slides, you'll see Intel Alder Lake. That means Intel's 12th gen. But I, I want to clarify the P28 and the U15 because we don't ever advertise our processors that way. We, we have a P-series Core i5, Core i7s, and we have U-series Core i5, Core i7s. They're from, they're from mobile platforms. And the 15 and the 28 is, is the power envelope that they're designed to operate in. So 28 is 28 watts for the P-series and 15 is 15 watts for the U-series, but they're all Core i7s and Core i5s. So just wanted to clarify that. Mm. Thank you very much for that, Barry. Yeah, sometimes I, I I look at these and, you know, look at the slides and start going at it and just assume a lot of that stuff. So so thank you very much for for pausing me, right? And uh and, and clearing that up for everyone. Yeah. Um so so but let me ask this question, because I'm gonna throw one back to you, Barry. So when yeah. you're talking about the P and the U. Tell us or talk to us for a second, just some of the differences, the different types of users for maybe a P and a U. Yeah, I think for the U series, it's more of a mobile, the, the, the you know, kind of the, the lightest, longest battery life, you know, the whole thing. We're talking about power envelopes here. So the P series is new from Intel. We've never had uh, mobile processors in that 20 to 28 watt um, uh, power envelope before. And we have that to provide additional levels of performance in a thin and light platform like the T14S. Um, and because the power is, is a bit higher, the, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll pay a small uh, premium on battery life but for that particular user, they want a more powerful processor because of what they're doing in that same thin and light platform. So that's the beauty of it. We, we now have the choice that Lenovo can then implement and provide solutions for customers, whether you want extreme mobility or mobility with uh, a little boost in power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, thank you. And you talk about mobility, that almost takes me right into my, my next one, which is the X13. So, you know, we were showing you, or I showed you, you know, 14 inch models in the X1 Carbon, X1 Yoga, also in the T14S. Now we go down to a 13 inch model, which is the X13. So you'll see the specs over there. Um, you'll see the two different Intel Alder Lake uh, CPUs that we also offer in the P and the U the up to 32 gigs of memory which we are seeing you know more of that in the uh in the market so at one time there was everybody was kind of okay with eight gig right now we're seeing more of a trend where folks want 16 and, and 32 gig memory in their systems um at one time there was a lot of 256 uh is ssds now we're seeing more 512 and, and one terabyte um, and in some cases, depending on the user, you know, you might see a two terabyte, but um, a lot of different trends that we're seeing in the, in the market and uh, we're putting that and we're building that into a lot of our, our systems for being able to do that. Battery life on this one, you'll see up to 15 hours of battery life. That was that mobile mark 18 uh, measurement that we have. Um, so if you're on the go, the X13 is a good one. I personally use every day the X13 Yoga, um, it's my everyday system. I absolutely love it. I love the form factor just because of the ability to be able to use it as a clamshell, as a regular uh, notebook. But then if I am in a meeting, you know, and, and I've been trying to do this for a while, get away from, from the use of paper, you know, I'll flip it over into a tablet mode, pull out the pen that I have right here as I'm feeling for it, pull out my pen and then I can just start to jot my notes and everything using the system in tablet mode. 
So if you do have users that w are looking for more of a versatile system, the yogas, I think, are, are right on par for, for that. So that's kind of like on our premium system. That's a lot of the things that we see a lot of our customers, you know, using uh, on the premium side. Um, when you're looking at small, medium businesses, one of the things that we focus on, and we launched the ThinkBook, I think it was like three years ago, the ThinkBook line. Um, you know, this line over the last couple of years has really grown into multiple form factors, right? And one of the things that we have done is we've really partnered with Intel just to make sure that we are offering systems with, you know, that Evo technology on it. Also, you know, V Pro Essentials um, uh, on, on systems as well, because we just noticed that, you know, a lot of folks are using it for multiple uses. They want a system that, you know, they can definitely use uh, for business, that they can travel with, something that is a premium look and feel to it. And just developing, you know, these systems with uh, with Intel has been very, very good. One of the things that we start out with is the 13X. So you'll see this one as far as the ThinkBook is the, you know, 12.9 millimeters, you know, 1.2 kg. So it's really thin, really light. Um, it has that Intel Evo verified. So, you know, incredible performance that we have on this one. So. Uh, having a, a, a small laptop is, is very good for our users on the go. Also, the 13S is another one. So you're still talking about a 13-inch system. The differences between the X and the S are really a couple of ports and just the thickness. So the S is going to be just a little bit thicker than, this, than the previous model I showed you. But still, having this one and up to 12 hours of battery life is a very good in a form factor. A couple more that I'll share with you real quick is the ThinkBook 14. So this is a workhorse model for us that we have. We're on our fourth generation now. You'll see the specs over there. Uh, but this one is a model that carries the VPro Essentials. And Barry, I know you'll, uh, you, you'll, I think you'll talk about this or at least hit on uh, ThinkBook uh, VPro Essentials and what that uh, provides for folks. Yeah. Yep, I will. All right, cool. And then the last one, and then Barry, I'm gonna tell you that I'm about to tee it up and give it to you, is the ThinkBook 15. So uh, so now we're talking about the 15 inch model uh, in the ThinkBook, has that numpad on the side. So if you have users that are doing different things, you know, maybe working in spreadsheets, working in accounting field, maybe teachers sitting there entering grades or something, you know, this could be a good uh, uh, form factor for them as well. Barry, real quick before we uh, kick it over to you, I do have a question I want to pose to Dexter that came through uh, the chat. Uh, uh, I believe, who was it? Um, Michael wanted to know uh, if you could highlight the differences between the ThinkBook and the ThinkPad uh, lineup. It was like about three years ago where I think Lenovo came into to our offices and put a ThinkBook in my hands for the first time, and it completely blown, blew me away just with the quality. <laughs> and, and then you told me the price, and I was like, okay, sign me up. <laughs> because <laughs> because it, it, it was it, this it's a these are super high quality devices um uh they have a great look and feel to them but i but how does that compare to the thinkpad who really has that premium feel that, that are there's it was really hard to differentiate those device the think book between the thinkpad devices because they felt so similar once i actually got them in my hands yeah, that's a great question, Chris. Um, here's here's a couple of differences. You'll you'll notice it on the screen, right there in the middle of the keyboard. Right, where's that red track point? Yeah, we realized when we created the ThinkBook that you know we wanted to appeal to a different user, right? Um, I'm a traditionalist, right? I'm a traditional ThinkPad person. I love my little red tra uh, track uh, point in the very in the middle of my keyboard. I use it every single day. Uh, but we also have a lot of users that are coming into the market that don't. So we said, let's come out with something that's a little different, right? Um, let's also increase the size of the, uh, of the pad. Uh, so, so the little pad, you know, more and more people are using that to navigate through the system. So we want to make sure that that is a nice big trackpad to be able to, um, to, to be able to maneuver on. Now for us, 
at Lenovo, when we did a couple things differently because we were marketing the ThinkBook to small, medium business. So we know that small, medium business, they may not want things like asset tagging. They may not want things like etching if you're in education. Um, they may not want to have a box that is a, a little higher cost because we're going through more of the mil spec testing. So, so you'll see that as a little difference between the, the two. One is geared, ThinkPad is really geared to corporate, um, um, you know, enterprise, global type customers, right? And then ThinkBook is more geared to small, medium business customers. Awesome. And then uh, Ronnie wanted to chime in also as well. If you have a ThinkPad uh, and a ThinkBook model that you're trying to compare side by side, uh, go ahead and use uh, psref.lenovo.com. If you've never gone to that website, it is a fantastic resource for, mm -hmm. for specs and for information on all of Lenovo's devices, uh, psref at or psref dot lenovo dot com uh you can get side by side comparisons there yes. uh barry uh if, if we have any more lenovo questions uh we'll we'll go ahead and ask them at the end of the broadcast but i want to go over to barry real quick because i know he's got a lot to talk about on the intel side of things so barry how's it going uh it's going great thanks uh and thanks dexter um great information and really sets the stage for what i want to talk about because i want to talk about you know intel's an ingredient and so I want to talk about the, the value that Intel brings uh, to Lenovo and ultimately to you and your customers um, by being a critical ingredient, uh, ingredient for your businesses. And so let, let's kind of dive in. And I, I'm going to start just by reiterating what Dexter said earlier that, you know, yeah, restrictions are lifting. Um, employees are going back into the office, but the work model has forever changed. And we are in a hybrid work environment, even people going into the into the offices. All of the folks at DNH as a good example, um, they are, you know, they go in to the corporate location um, maybe once or twice a week, and uh, maybe once or twice a week or maybe three times a week, they're working from home. And so um, we have this hybrid model. And because we have a hybrid model, the, the way we use compute has changed. Um, so the tools that we use have become more heavily threaded. Even if you just think of the from the standpoint of, you know, now we do video conferencing all over the place. Um, even what would typically be a meeting in a conference room at a on a campus location now occurs across a geographical area, over the internet, over the cloud via video conferencing. And couple that with the, the collaboration tools that people are using uh, and the, the need for the platform to be reliable and stay connected and for IT departments to manage these um, dispersed resources uh, all through a geographical area, it has dramatically accelerated the compute needs and really changed forever the way in which we use our compute end devices. Um, and that's a that's a very interesting scenario because for the first time, um, 2022 has brought software in the Microsoft Windows 11 operating system and hardware with Intel's hybrid architecture, which is part of our 12th generation processor technology into the mix. And these two ingredients have really been the first solutions designed around the hybrid work environment. And it's a pretty interesting thing because we have this, this new architecture, we have artificial intelligence um, as part of it to help provide more levels of security. You've got the vPro platform technology that is also designed for business. And I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but we now have solutions that are specifically designed for the new model of work um, that we're all 
uh, working under at the present time. Now, Lenovo, no, oh, hang on. Lenovo takes these ingredients, they add their expert engineering and their design teams to take the ingredients from Intel, the ingredients from Microsoft, and to provide state-of-the-art modern business solutions that are designed for today's business environment and specifically a hybrid work environment. So with that, let's take a look then um, at some of these um, new enhancements that Intel has brought to the table. So for most people, this will be a, a, a review, but we, we have this new hybrid architecture. We launched it with the 12th gen, and basically we have two different types of processor cores uh, within one processor package. We have what's known as our performance cores, and these are the traditional multi-threaded cores that are designed for high performance, um, and much greater speeds. You know, when you see the clock speed for a processor, it's the performance cores that you're seeing there. For uh, the 12th gen, we also introduced uh, what we refer to as efficient cores. And efficient cores are smaller cores that are single threaded and that we can put a bunch of them on a processor and they're designed to offload these background tasks that are increasing at very low power consumption so that these background tasks can have a dedicated processor core resource while the foreground tasks can run um, in the performance that the user needs. That is um, what the 12th generation has brought to the table. Now, when you couple that with Intel's work with Microsoft, just on the performance side, they have the um, their task scheduler, which determines which cores get which tasks. And we have designed this processor to work efficiently with Windows 10 and with Windows 11. So then Lenovo can take these ingredients and provide state-of-the-art platforms for the way that users are using their systems today in the business environment. Now, with that, you saw on Dexter's slide, we have these U processors, we have these P processors, we, we, we have S processors. They all define the power envelope they operate on. So the U series is really designed for very low power. You know, I would say anywhere from eight to 15 watts. And, and so we have solutions that are designed for businesses to operate in those environments. The P series is new. And you can see with the P-Series, what happens? Well, if you look at the bottom of that column for the P-Series, there's more cores available. We've added additional performance cores because for the P-Series, it operates at a slightly higher uh, uh, power level, but you can still put it in these thin and light notebooks and you've got additional processor performance for the customers that need that extra level of performance. We have solutions designed for mobile workstations. These are even larger notebooks um, that typically will have a discrete graphic solution built into it. And this is for your engineering teams, your content developers, anybody like that, even your, your high-end um, film and video editing um, folks, where we add even more cores right, and increase the power. By the way, when we increase the power, we can increase the frequency, right? So it all is related. And then finally, business desktops, and that's the S series, and that's where you get, you know, kind of the most and the highest levels of, of performance there. Okay, with regards to that, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about vPro, because vPro is a platform technology. So you can, you can have an Intel Core i5 or a Core i7 Lenovo platform, but the platforms that are really designed for business are the vPro platforms because the vPro platforms bring business level performance, business level manageability, 
with additional hardware-based security features. And that is key because a single consumer user, yes, believe me, that you know they can be I impacted with security issues. But for a business, it could mean the livelihood of many, many, many folks that work with that business. And it could even mean the business actually going down. In fact, I just read, um, I think it was yesterday, something's going on with one of the LA school districts um, for ransomware right now. Ransomware has just become a huge business for these folks out there that are holding municipalities and entities hostage um, and in order to get a payout and to release those systems back to those users. So it's a vastly different world today and software alone does not solve the problem. You must have hardware-based solutions coupled with software that can help to make the platforms safer. And that's where vPro comes in. And now we have vPro, we have multiple choices for vPros. vPro. So you have your traditional full-featured vPro, which you'll see listed as vPro Enterprise, right? That's the full-featured, every, every last feature of vPro implemented into that, the full set of manageability, the full set of security features, um, built into that platform. Uh, and these are ba these are built on Intel's 12th gen core i5s and i7s. We also have vPro now for Chrome. So if you're selling Chrome into a corporate location, there are now security enhancements built in to a Chrome platform that Intel provides so that companies can offer Chromebooks with the vPro um, branding and those some of those security features implemented. But we also have a brand new one for small and medium business, and this is vPro Essentials. The beauty with vPro Essentials is full-featured vPro gives you state-of-the-art levels of management, management over the cloud, um, you know, um, uh, um, uh, KVM solutions um, so that you can take full advantage of keyboard, video, and mouse, whether you're 10,000 miles from that unit um, and you can control it, you can control it wirelessly, you can remediate a solution, you can do all of that stuff. What Essentials brings to the small business is it brings nearly all of the security features that are available in vPro Enterprise that small and medium businesses want, but they don't necessarily do all the levels of management that a larger company would do. So we can offer a lower price point on platforms that utilize vPro Essentials, but we can bring the security features that the, that the companies and the users are demanding. And that's where vPro Essentials comes in. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the threats and from a security standpoint, because this isn't a deep dive into vPro, but this is an important ingredient in the Lenovo platforms that you're going to provide your customers. Obviously, the threats are evolving every day. We hear about something new. Um, in fact, it's become noise level uh, uh, at this point. Unless it's a gigantic thing, it really doesn't even make the news anymore. Um, that's how commonplace um, the threats have become and the sophistication that these um, entities are in, uh, deploying uh, to gain access to platforms, to data, to user information, um, so that they can they can extract whatever it is they're they're after. So, on the application, the OS level, you know, we, you've got ransomware, you've got crypto jacking. You, most people don't even know their system's been hijacked for crypto jacking. But, yeah. you know, I'm gonna I'm just gonna use you know, three thousand systems from the school district um, to do my my Bitcoin mining for me. You know, saw an example of that earlier today on a news story. Something, uh, 
The whole fleet of systems got crypto jacked. They yeah. didn't even know it. They didn't detect it for months. Yeah, that's exactly right. It goes undetected and the whole thing. And the beauty is with Intel's 12th generation, we, we, we actually um, deploy uh, artificial intelligence um, with Microsoft's uh, Endpoint Defender. And um, we developed machine learning um, for uh, that implementation. And so we can flag when there is suspect activity going on like an increase in arithmetic operations, which is crypto jacking in a nutshell. And we can alert the IT or the user, hey, this is something you may want to look into. This doesn't look normal kind of thing. So just yeah. one, of the, one example there of, of some of the things that Intel's done. But they are now attacking at levels underneath the operating system. So... They are doing firmware attacks on on memory and system management memory, um, and they are also introducing attacks via hardware that is um, placed in the system prior to it getting to the customer's hands, or maybe after it reaches the customer's hands, and they can make a slight change in hardware. Of course, you have to have access to the system that can now um, do some 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 pretty dastardly things. I, d I rarely get to use the word dastardly, so. <laughs> it's a fun that. word That's to use, yes. A, a fun word to use for sure. So, <laughs> I haven't heard it since the 60s Batmans. <laughs> uh, there you go, right? That's right. Big, big 60s. You, you, you do look a little bit like Adam's we Adam West, so uh, <laughs> the late great. <laughs> If, if only I could do a good Adam West. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, you 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 got to have a layered approach to protecting the platform. Software alone cannot solve this problem because software works at the level of the operating system and above, right? So you've got to have solutions that can protect uh, the entire um, platform. And that's where Intel coupled with Lenovo come into play. We have an entire, um, um, we have an entire uh, portfolio of security features that the whole portfolio is referred to as the Intel hardware shield. And these provide below the operating system levels of security at the operating system and an application level um, security. And then the ability to provide real-time scanning because of the hardware that you implement, as well as utilizing artificial intelligence that's part of the Intel platform to give the platform an edge to highlight and find uh, behaviors that have not yet been discovered by software packages. So we're talking zero day um, implementations here. You take that, and couple that with the additional security features that Lenovo provides. Because the Lenovo takes Intel's hardware shield and they build additional security features on top of that, like Lenovo's um, Think Shutter and Lenovo's Secure Wipe and, and the Secure Update, where they ensure that the BIOS, when if it's being updated, there are certificates that are signed so that um, nothing can happen in that platform at the level of fir firmware without the proper handshake between the source and the destination. Some really amazing technologies that we combine together. And, and that is the beauty of Intel working with Lenovo on these platforms. And when you think about it, hybrid computing from a security standpoint it really needs to take management into consideration as well because pcs were easier to manage when we all worked in a campus location and you were all behind the firewall and the it department was right there and you could remediate and solve problems immediately that's not the case anymore people are on campus, off campus, within the firewall, 
outside the firewall, you need cloud-based solutions. You need solutions that work whether you're wired or wireless. And Intel is the only company that provides the ability to do management, whether you're wired or wireless, whether you're on the cloud or behind a firewall, and whether the system is even up and running or not. That is one of the most powerful things. And when you think about security, being able to provide this level of management is part of the security picture because it's not enough just to highlight the issue. You need to isolate that platform. You need to be able to remediate that, that um, issue and you need to be able to do it remotely. And with vPro platforms, you can do that. And I'm talking about the full featured vPro platforms now. And if you look, um, how do we do this? Well, we do it with our active management technology, which by the way, is about 15 years um, old. We've implemented this technology, um, you know, over a decade ago. Uh, now it's been enhanced, right? It, it only worked wired before, but now it works wirelessly. It only worked in a corporate campus behind the firewall. Now it works through the firewall. We have cloud-based solution for it. And um, um, it works uh, even through uh, Thunderbolt ports. Uh, so it means it works through docking stations. So this is, this is no easy task. Now, when you couple that with what Lenovo brings to the table because Lenovo has their manageability commander. And this lets them, you manage all of these endpoints through a single console and you can maintain and repair PCs, but you have all the vPro functionality plugged in to the manageability commander. And if you're not using Lenovo solutions, there are other management consoles and you can see them listed here. So if you're buying Lenovo platforms, but you, you're company has utilized another type of management um, uh, console, vPro works with many other management consoles. This is just uh, a, a small snapshot of the consoles that vPro works with. Nice. It's really an end-to-end -end powerful solution. And here's the thing, you saw Intel Evo on some previous slides that Dexter was showing. Evo is a set of requirements to ensure state-of-the-art mobile platforms. Mobile platforms that provide all-day battery life, instant wake from sleep, um, uh, uh, responsiveness and performance, and the most unique and sleek platforms available. That's what Evo brings to the table. And companies like Lenovo have to submit their designs for Intel in order to get them Evo certified. So we have the Evo platforms and Evo is really an end user benefit. You know, it's the end user that benefits from Evo. So there are consumer Evo platforms, but we also have business level Evo platforms that are vPro Evo platforms, or as referred to in the badge, you probably can't see it, it'll say, vPro and Evo design. And these are the cream of the crop, best possible mobile business platforms you can buy. And the great thing is Lenovo has a very healthy offering of these platforms so that the user benefits from Evo and the business benefits from vPro. Now, here's a snapshot of you know, what we're talking about here. These are the business class solutions. And I'm not just stopping at notebooks uh, because Lenovo provides uh, desktop and workstation solutions that also have vPro for businesses, designed for businesses. So you can see the notebooks there on the left-hand side that um, uh, implement vPro, the mobile workstations that implement vPro, the premium notebooks on the right-hand side, those are the Evo solutions. And then on the bottom, the vPro essentials. So mobile platforms that um, 
um, can be provided with the small business version of vPro and not just mobile, right? Um, desktop platforms as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot. Now, the last thing I want to touch on here before we open it up for, you know, different types of questions is we talked a lot about how you try to prevent problems while the platform is being utilized. But Intel and Lenovo both share this philosophy of how do we protect a platform during its entire life cycle? From the time it's being built in the factory and the time it gets to your customer, it can travel through many, many, many hands, many hands. Not only that, the time it's being deployed at a customer location, all of the other hands that have access to that platform, and then when that platform gets retired, because today many people do, you know, I'll refer to as PC as a service or hardware as a service or however as a service you want to classify it. But a lot of times after a platform is done being utilized by a company, it's turned into a leasing company. Um, to be repurposed maybe in another geography or um, you know wherever it's it's going. So how do we protect these platforms through the entire life cycle? Well, that's where Intel and Lenovo both come in with solutions to help. One of the things I want to highlight on this slide is that when you're done with the system, Intel now has the ability to do secure platform erase, which will not only, you know, yeah, um, um, securely erase the drive, right? And overwrite everything on the drive, whether it's an Intel SSD or a third party SSD. But now with uh, the 12th generation, we have platform erase that it will remove all certificates all passwords that are maintained in hardware, saved in firmware flash, everything gets wiped. So you can ensure that when that system leaves that company or government enterprise, it is completely, complete, completely void of any of that company or entity's data. Um, pretty powerful stuff, especially when you think about removing certificates and so forth, because it's easy to erase a drive. It's much harder to um, remove uh, platform certificates. However, that's just one piece of the puzzle because Lenovo and Intel provide a level of security throughout the product's life cycle. So Lenovo has the trusted supplier um, program where they vet the suppliers that are providing components into their um, factories and they maintain strict adherence to the, to the level of security of those components used to build your platform. But what happens when it leaves Lenovo? Well, it might go to a shipping company, it might go onto a boat, it might go into a distri distribution warehouse, it might go to a reseller. And I was gonna be a heck if we forgot distribution. Yeah, no, no, the <laughs> distribution is key there, but nothing happens in the distribution warehouse. I'm nope. just you know, <laughs> highlighting that. But here's the thing, every step of the way, somebody can gain access to that platform, open it up and exchange something out of there. Maybe they put a memory module in there that has the ability to track keyboard strokes and capture data and then send that data out through um, the um, ethernet port or wirelessly. I mean, this stuff exists. So that's where Intel's transparent supply chain comes because once it leaves the build in the Lenovo factory, any change that occurs, and by the way, Lenovo is one of the only companies that has this offering. We, we supply the ability to do this. Lenovo is one of the only companies that have this. And by the way, the part numbers are at the bottom there because it's a separate you know, part number that you can order for this. But you can ensure that any hardware 
that is changed from the time it leaves the factory till the time it gets to the customer throughout the life cycle at that customer is logged and noted and IT can be alerted to a change in hardware. And that is a critically important piece to make sure that the platform is 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 a as secure as possible. Also, we have trusted device setup. That lets, you know, if Lenovo does a, an OS build, that ensures that the image that is preloaded is the same image that you wind up getting when it reaches your location. And these are technologies that Intel um, has implemented in our vPro platform that manufacturers like Lenovo can take advantage of and offer to their customers. So some really amazing stuff. So really when you get down to it, and I know I'm right at the end of my time here, Lenovo and Intel, we, we as, as a team, deliver the best computing solutions for modern businesses. And when you couple you know, the vPro platform with the Lenovo ThinkShield and the technologies that Lenovo brings to that platform to make it more secure, regardless of whether it's a notebook, a mobile workstation, a desktop platform, you're, you've got the best possible solution for businesses. With that, I will shut up and we'll see if there's some questions. There are some questions, uh, a lot of questions specifically around vPro. So I'm gonna try and fly through these as, as quickly as we can. Um, Someone asks, when using vPro, do my customers need to uh, have any additional training or experience out of the box uh, to use it? Yeah, so two things. For the security features, for the most part, no. So the security features are enabled by default, most of them are. There are additional ones that can be turned on, and there are additional ones that are OEM enabled. So that means Lenovo would have to enable them, like the um, trusted supplier or the, um, oh gosh, I can't even remember the names of all our acronyms, uh, the trusted device setup or the transparent supply chain. Those have to be implemented by Lenovo, but the security features, there's nothing for the user to do. That's the beauty of essentials and even full-blown vPro. For a small and medium business, they don't have to do anything. They're enabled by default, for the most part. Uh, it's sticking on the uh, additional training uh, uh, bandwagon, Al and Jeff about at the same time asked, is there any uh, help available to set up vPro property properly from Intel? There is. We have setup guides available. Um, we also have training on the Intel Partner Assistance Platform as part of your um, membership in the IPA program. Um, you not only earn uh, credits for buying Lenovo platforms with Intel inside, but you also have access to more in-depth training that's available, and vPro is a big part of that. So there's lots of training out there on vPro, including, you know, uh, deployment and so forth, how to, how to implement it with Emma, Intel's Endpoint Management Assistant, which is our cloud solution. Um, so there's lots of stuff out there, yes. If you're not uh, sure if you're a part of the IPA or you want to join the IPA, uh, I'd say just email uh, intelspecialist at dnh.com. They will be more than happy to help you out uh, with that. Yeah, that's a big uh, one. That's a big one because uh, DNH actually even has a, a, a concierge program that even helps you manage the Intel IPA um, uh, program and what's available to you. So DNH has gone above and beyond in helping customers not only join the program but actu actually take advantage of all the benefits that the program has to offer. For customers that may have been sold these pro products but were never used is there a cost to activate vpro nope zero cost i mean just your time to to turn them on and and actually this is a this is a cool thing when the pandemic first hit a lot of companies had been buying vpro platforms for years and they didn't even know why they just buy them because they were the business platforms 
but they hadn't turned anything on or implemented it. And then when the pandemic hit, these companies started to um, activate the vPro management stuff because now all their employees were working from home. And so the companies that had been buying these vPro platforms for years suddenly were able to very effectively manage and remediate problems with their employees that were now working remotely. So no, there is no additional costs involved. When you buy a, a vPro platform, there is a premium that you're paying, but that premium you're paying is because of what you're getting in that platform. And it's a mm -hmm. very tiny amount considering what, what you're actually getting. Yeah, it's a good value prop, bang for your buck. And that actually kind of leads to the next question we had. Uh, I don't currently sell vPro systems. If I want to go down that road, how do I find resources to help me sell vPro to my customers? Yeah, I think the first the first step down the path is um, with the Intel team at DNH and Intel's partner um, assistant, the um, partner alliance program, the IPA, the Intel partner alliance program, um, because that's where part of being a member there and earning credits is you need to take some trainings and it's it's perfect. These aren't very long trainings, but there's a, there's plenty of vPro trainings out there that can help you very easily get started with vPro. It's the second best IPA you'll ever have a part of your life. Yeah. First, the first one you drink. <laughs> if you have to, if, if you have to explain your jokes, they're usually not good. Dexter, <laughs> there was a question that came across that I wanted to to throw your way. Uh, okay. Is do do we have any uh, resources or uh, PDF uh, list of all the uh, Lenovo SKUs that you uh, talked about today? Yes, um, I would say for all the uh, all the SKUs. Um, just get with your DNH, you know, rep. Um, they, they would have all the uh, all the SKUs, all the breakdown as far as the specific um, configurations in there that that you guys can that DNH keeps either in stock or or can definitely get their hands on. But yes, that does uh, exist. Uh, I was speaking with Ronnie Gatlin in the chat, uh, who uh, is on the Lenovo side here at DNH. He is going to have a PDF that is available. Uh, to you guys uh, after the fact, probably when this goes on demand. Uh, so go ahead and check the resources again uh, when you get an email saying this is available on demand. Uh, we should have that PDF, uh, PDF up there uh, for you guys as well. Um, one last question on the, uh, the hardware side, the Lenovo side, is um, Al was wondering when can we ex expect to see or start seeing inventory of the M90Ts, uh, i7, i9 uh, 12th gen with vpro uh coming into stock and distribution and when can we start seeing the thinkpad t series notebooks i7 i9 12th gen with vpro coming into stock yeah the the m the m90t we haven't received a bunch of requests for for i9 to be honest with you um therefore you probably will not see that in stock however it can be done so I would just say reach out to you know your DNH rep. We can build a configuration, or a configuration can be created, and and we could either do, you know, ship through DNH or do a drop ship of of that hardware. Uh, but that's the reason why you don't you don't see it on the M90T. Um, as far as the uh, ThinkPad question, um, you'll see a lot of i5 and a lot of i7. Uh, you will, mm -hmm. you don't see any i9. That's not offered on the on the ThinkPad, uh, but you will see a lot of i5 and the i7 out there. Um, awesome. That is available in in vPro has the Evo um, and and all those bells and whistles. Awesome. Well, Dexter Barry, thank you guys so much for your time and your knowledge here today. Uh, it was greatly appreciated. Um, uh, anything you'd like to add before we get out of here? Um, yeah, I think I've talked enough. Um, <laughs> Barry's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Yeah, man. I, yeah. Yeah. I just want to thank everybody for their business. Um, you know, really appreciate it. Um, Barry at a loss for words. I did it, everyone. <laughs> thank you later. <laughs>
Oh, well, gosh. guys, yes, thank you. Thank, Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for listening. I appreciate uh, each and every one of you being, uh, you know, champions and, and raising a flag for, for Lenovo and Intel in this market. Uh, we're here to help you. And so I uh, hope, this, hope this did help someone. Yep. Uh, if you're watching this on demand or have any questions after the fact, you can go ahead and email Lenovo Specialist at dnh.com. They will answer any questions that you have. Uh, there is a promotion running with this uh, with this broadcast. Uh, if you're pur purchasing a minimum of 50k in Lenovo or Intel premium devices from July to December 31st, you can be entered in a chance to win one of three uh, $5,000 uh, travel vouchers. If you have more. If you have any questions about that, um, email Lenovo Specialist at dnh.com. They can help you out with that. Our next broadcast uh, will be on September 27th. Uh, we'll be talking about higher ed and esports planning for success. I believe Logan Hermes will be uh, hosting that one. So go ahead and join Logan uh, on the 27th of September. Uh, but with that, uh, Barry, Dexter, again, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope everyone that was watching has a fantastic afternoon. Thanks, all. Thanks, Dexter. Appreciate it.